Next, binary search tree sorts values when adding. Right now, this is failing. It's saying that tree.left.left .left is null on line 61. So let's work our way down to where that error is being thrown. Remember, we're resetting the tree. It's just a new instance with a value of 20. And we're expecting tree.value to be 20. We're not getting an error there, so that means that's working. Great. We move along. We call insert on 15. And let's follow along with our visual here, since now I think we're corresponding to the same values that are in that image. We call insert on 15. Starting with 20 at our root, 15 should go to the left. And then we're saying expect tree.left.value to be 15. So far, so good. We insert 25, and we're expecting the tree's right.value to be 25. OK, great. That matches up. No errors thrown by the time we get to that line. Not until line 61. So we're good so far. Then we call insert again with 5, and we're expecting the left value to itself have a left property, which has a value of 5. And that's where we're getting this error, saying that tree.left.left is null. So remember that right now tree.left should be this value, which stores 15, which is itself a binary search tree. And it can have a left property, which is being initialized to null. That's what we're seeing right now. But if we've inserted a 5, 5 is less than 15, so we should see its left property be a new instance of a binary search tree. And that's where we're going wrong right now. So we need to make our insert function a little bit more complex. If the value is less than the value of the current tree, we don't want to necessarily overwrite a value if there's something there. If it's empty, we want to put the new binary search tree instance in its place. But if there's something there, then really what we have to do is look at this node and compare its value with the one that we're trying to insert, 5 in this case. So here's where things get a little bit tricky. If I walk through this without thinking about code at all, we're starting with 20, inserting 15, that goes to the left, insert 25, which goes to the right, now we're inserting 5. How does that work? Well, we start at the root and we say 5 is less than 20. So let's go to the left. Since there is a node here, we're going to repeat that process. We're going to say, OK, well, 5 is less than 15. So again, we go to the left. And now since there's nothing there, we can insert our new node. If there were something here, we would just repeat the process again and compare the value 5 to whatever value was stored as the left child of 15. And here's where the fact that binary search trees are recursive structures really comes in handy. Because when we get to that point where we say whatever direction we're looking in, just repeat the process, that's where we can bring in some recursion. So we're going to say if the value is less than this value, then we have to make an additional check here. If this.left is null, then we'll do this. But if it's not, that means there's something there already. That means that we have to just repeat the process for that left child. Like in our case, when we get down to, when we look at 20, we say 5 is less than 20. But there's something here in the left child spot. So what we really want to do, actually, is insert that value 5 into the left child, into this tree that has a value of 15. So if there is something there, we'll just call this dot left dot insert. It's a tree, so it also has an insert method. And we're going to pass that value in. Let's save that. See where it gets us. And hey, now it's breaking at line 73. We've made quite a bit of progress. It's now telling us tree.left, dot left, dot right, dot left. Okay, so we're going several levels down through our binary search tree. But we've just passed beyond line 61 where the error was throwing. So this is working. And 
it kind of makes sense that it's breaking down here once we start to throw right into the mix because we haven't coded that logic out. But it should be exactly the same as what we have for left. Let's grab this. Let's replace what we have on the right side of the tree. And of course, we're going to have to change all of these values to be this dot right. And if we save that, is it passing? Yes, it is. It sorts values when adding. So this is now working. Our insert method increments the number of nodes, checks to see if the value is less. If so, then we're going to use the left side of the tree. Otherwise, we're going to go down the right. Either way, we first check to see if there's something there. If there isn't, then we just put our value in a new binary search tree as that child, either the left child or the right child. Otherwise, we recursively call the insert method on either the left or the right child. Now, even though this is working, I did something a couple minutes ago that I don't usually like to do. I copied this whole block and pasted it down here. And I just changed a couple values. I changed wherever it said left to wherever it said right. And that doesn't usually feel good. That tells me that there's something more general about this process that we can probably abstract out. So if the only thing that's different in the logic of these two code blocks is whether it's left or right, I think we can abstract that out into a variable. Let's grab this and let's say if the value is less than this current tree's value, then we're going to say the direction is equal to the string left. Otherwise, direction equals right. And of course, I need to define that. I'll say let direction, oops, direction, there we go. And now we just need to use it. So let's comment this stuff out. Grab where most of the logic is actually happening. And anytime that we say left, Instead of using the dot operator, we're going to use bracket notation here. And access that direction variable that we made before. And if we save this, it's still working. So we can get rid of all of this code down here. So the only thing that's really dynamic in this case is the direction. And once we determine which direction we should be going in, based on the comparison of our values, the logic is always the same.